the batch stirred tank reactor is likely to be the next common reactor type that chemical engineers will be introduced to in a reactor design class. And the a good analogy of what a BSTR is would be a wine barrel. And the reason for that is because we have no flow in or out. So unlike a CSTR, we put some reactants or some kind of solution into a reactor and then we walk away. It's a lot like wine. You just stick grapes and some yeast into a barrel and you walk away and you come back in a few years and you have $500 Merlot. And you will commonly see I mean, it's it's unlikely you'll so in practice BSTRs will be drawn like cylinders except you will it's very unlikely there will be any uh, flow in or out by definition uh, there can be cases of semi batch reactors in which you'll have one flow while you're loading the reactor or while you're draining the reactor you'll have a flow out but that'll be it um, and batcher tank reactors provide a very good uh, segue into the next reactor type that chemical engineers are introduced to, which is plug flow reactors. So this video will give a basic overview of the batcher tank reactor, as well as derive a generic mole balance to tell you what kind of volume you will need based on the conversion of your desired conversion. Um, and so hopefully you, peep, uh, you guys can find it useful. And in this example, we will say that our BSTR has some volume V, some concentration CA. We will say because it is mixed, it will have a propeller. And that's about it for all we can write. And if we go to a mole balance, accumulation is equal to N minus out plus generation. Uh, you will not write a steady state mole balance on a BSTR because it will be pretty boring. BSTRs have concentrations that change over time. And because of that, we write our accumulation term D and A DT. And that must be equal to, we have no flow in, we have no flow out, but we do have a reaction occurring and therefore we'll have some term RA times V. And at this point, what we recognize, again, to make sure we understand the dimensions, this has units of moles of A that react per time. We rewrite NA as CAV. And when we do this, we plug it into our equation here, DCAV dt must be equal to ra times v there are two cases or two types of bstrs we can have we can have isobaric bstrs or isochoric bstrs so constant volume for the uh, isochoric and constant pressure for the isobaric and so if, so this is a key equation to remember, uh, if we have a constant volume, so we'll start off with isochoric because it's simpler. Uh, if, our, if our volume is constant term, we can pull out V from our uh, differential equation above, leading us to have D, V times DCA DT must be equal to RA times V and we can cancel out our V's quite nicely, and we are left with DCA DT is equal to RA. And we can make it the substitution at this point and say for an nth order reaction, this will be equal to uh, minus K times CA to the nth power. Uh, 
although it is good practice to commonly leave it at this point because your rate of reaction of A can also depend on other variables if we had uh, multiple species involved in this reaction. So I should probably just leave it at this point. This is what the relationship you arrive at for a um, isocore. Now, if we had a liquid phase reaction, a further step we can make at this point is to say, because it's all liquid, Ca is equal to Ca0 times 1 minus x, only if V is equal to V0, so if your volumetric flow rate, or if the volume is constant, we can make this relationship. We can say uh, dCa must be equivalent to d times Ca0 times 1 minus x, and this would be equal to, because Ca0 is a constant, um, minus ca naught dx. And so if we make this substitution up here, we can say that minus ca naught dx dt is equal to ra. And a good check at this point for physical intuition as to what's going on, we see that there is a relationship between the concentration, the initial concentration of your BSTR, the conversion, and the reactor as a function of time and the rate of reaction. And if we have a fast rate of reaction, you'll have a your conversion will be changing rapidly with time, so that makes sense. If you increase your concentration of A initially, if you're working with positive order kinetics, your rate of reaction will also increase. So this uh, is another key relationship to be able to derive with a isochoric BSTR. In the case of when we are working with isobaric PSTR, uh, BSTRs. The things get a little bit trickier, but uh, we end up using the product rule. And so in the case, going back to this uh, equation here, dCAV dt must be equal to RAV because uh, your volume is now a function of time, because it is an isobar, we have to use the product rule. So performing the product rule on this tells us that Ca times dV dt plus V times dCa dt must be equal to RAV. And commonly on a test, the way we figure out what our volume is is by doing a mass balance on our reactor. And uh, what we say is we know that rho is equal to the mass per volume and d rho dt will be equal to d times m over v dt. We know that mass is conserved, so we can pull out the mass, and we are left with um, d 1 over v dt uh, times m. Sorry, this is <laughs> pretty poor handwriting even by my standards. Um, we can uh, usually be able to perform some kind of mass balance to find what this dv dt term is, but uh, we would need more information. So a generic 
introduction to the BSTR would end at this point if we are working with an isobar and with an isocore we arrive at this generic relationship. So I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.